Greetings everybody. Well, as for the presentation assignment for the course IBK 212 Renewable Biomass, myself Joyce, I would like to discuss the biochemical conversion of lignocellulosic biomass for bioethanol production based on um, the manuscript provided, which is um, bioethanol production from enzymatically saccharis 5 empty fruit branches hydrolysate using the Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Well, as an introduction, just as a brief um, explanation, um, in most of the um, ethanol production, which uh, as we know using the um, lignocellulose um, segment, which is known as also biomass, there will be two processes that takes place during this um, production, which it involves the pretreatment, which uh, has two parts to it, which is the alkaline and acid hydrolysis. And nextly, it would be the um, enzymatic sacrification. The sacrification is done to uh, produce glucose, uh, followed by fermentation with yeast, because through this, we can produce ethanol. And the ethanol production um, is actually a very complex biochemical process, which is actually done with the presence of yeast. Because uh, from there it will be able to um, uh, undergo the utilization of um, sugars, uh, also known as fermentable sugar, as substrate for converting themselves into ethanol and um, expanding their growth. Carbon dioxide and as well as um, other acquired end products. Well, since the bioethanol production would be from the empty fruit bunches which is known as EFB let us know what it means EFB is um, basically a part of uh, a major biomass type generated in the oil palm industry and um, it's generated from palm oil mills and EFB is uh, a lignocellulosic material consisting of a mixture of carbohydrate polymers which we can say as um, the cellulose and also hemicellulose and as for the lignocellulose, it is actually known also as lignocellulose, which refers to the plant dry matter, the biomass. It is um, one of the most abundantly available raw material um, in earth for the production of biofuels, which is mainly um, bioethanol as to what we are going to study in this um, assignment provided. And in this experiment, there are a few parameters that are taken into consideration for um, evaluation purpose, which would be the pH, temperature, and also rate of agitation uh, throughout the process of the ethanol production. But among these three, the temperature uh, holds a main or a very important effect because it actually um, gives an impact to the um, yeast development used which also then directly affects the yield of ethanol and also the byproducts that is produced through that. Not only that, um, the te temperature also um, acts as a sensitive um, component of the yeast, which then affects the alcohol concentration, its growth rate and also the fermentation rate that takes place. Next, uh, let's move on to the materials and methods, which um, consist of preparations, characterizations, and also uh, parameter determination and um, analysis. Well, firstly, we would go with the EFB preparation, whereby uh, we used a uh, dried bunch that is milled, sieved, and separated. As for the EFB characterization, it is done to um, determine the cellulose using the dry weight method. Nextly would be the, the third one would be the pretreatment, whereby um, the EFB is soaked with um, sodium hydroxide to get the treated version or the treated EFB. And then um, it was used for fermentation to determine for the um, operating optimum fermentation process parameters. And as for the inoculum that I prepared, it was the um, standardized Saccharomyces cerevisiae and then nextly is um, the determination of optimum parameters, which is to determine the um, effect of physical parameters on the ethanol production 
um, which is to determine um, the effect of initial pH, um, the rate of agitation, and the effect of temperature on eternal production. So then we proceed with the product analysis whereby the fermentable sugar and also the ethanol concentrations of the EFB hydrolysate is determined using um, the HPLC which is high performance um, liquid chromatography and lastly is the statistical analysis which is where the um, materials are prepared in triplicates and this is done to determine the significant difference between um, the control and also the um, experimental parameters that have to be studied. Well, as for the three important processes stated, it is basically the core process that needs to be um, followed in order to have a successful bioethanol production. So generally, bioethanol from EFP can be produced via the pretreatment of lignocellulose, hydrolysis or the sacrification of cellulose to produce um, simple sugars, fermentable sugars or also the fermentation of sugars to bioethanol. Um, pretreatment is basically an important step for the biochemical conversion of biomass and it requires the alteration of structure of cellulosic biomass to make it more um, accessible to enzyme and to convert the carbohydrate polymers into a more fermentable sugar. EFP actually consists of um, cellulose, um, hemicellulose, lignin, which are actually associated with each other, hence making them the main constraint in bioconversion. And for proper pretreatment and delignification process, it is necessary because it is to enable the breaking down of the complex structures of uh, the lignocellulose, reducing the lignin and also um, the hemicellulose contains, which then um, cause an increase in the pore size and surface area, and hence increasing the accessibility of cellulose for enzymatic digestion, which is an effective pretreatment process of EFB. And not only that, um, a combined um, acid and alkaline pretreatment is actually able to enhance the exposure of cellulose component in the EFB fiber, which then leads it to an improved accessibility of the cellulose for the enzymatic hydrolysis. So from here, the high temperature and pressure applied during the um, acid pretreatment process it actually helps to explore the fiber components making them accessible to high temperature of the um, sodium hydroxide and the sodium hydroxide pretreatment so this actually shows or results in an effective removal of hemicellulose and lignin respectively from the two processes leading to a smoother surface of the treated fiber. Well, so after the pretreatment um, of the biomass process is done, we then undergo the enzymatic hydrolysis for the conversion of, um, of the polysaccharides into monomer sugar such as uh, the glucose and also the silase that is present. So subsequently, sugars are fermented to ethanol by the use of different microorganisms. As for the um, enzyme hydrolysis, it's the process that uh, liberates the um, sugars, the monomeric sugars from the structural carbohydrates, um, cellulose and hemicellulose in the lignocellulosic biomass, whereby cellulose to glucose are catalyzed by the cellulase enzyme um, due to highly crystalline structure of the cellulose which then makes um, penetration of enzyme to the active site to be very difficult. Additions of um, surfacents during enzymatic hydrolysis is actually capable of modifying the cellulose surface properties or its characteristics and minimizes the irreversible binding of cellulose on the cellulose. And from here, it's basically a non-ionic surfactant is more suitable to enhance the cellulose hydrolysis. Nextly, we proceed to the third process, which is um, fermentation. 
whereby it's to produce the fuel ethanol. The pre-treated EFB hydrolysate um, is actually fermented using the Saccharomyces cerevisiae in this experiment. Um, the glucose consumption, the um, bioethanol production and cell concentration are to be monitored throughout this process. The yeast cell um, adapted, adapts slowly to the medium and then it grows um, exponentially. So from there, uh, the bioethanol is started to produce and continuously increase and reaches its maximum level as uh, the time increases. So this corresponded to the bioethanol yield. And with that, the cell growth um, at a certain point gets stagnant and also at enters the stationary phase. And this shows that the bioethanol production actually declines slightly. This might be due to depletion of um, carbon source and also the reversed consumption of accumulated ethanol by the organism itself. We shall now proceed to the uh, results and discussion of this um, study. As for the pretreatment um, of EFP, high content of cellulose present um, in EFB was indicated and has a very high potential as a sugar source of ethanol production. And not only that, this uh, situation had taken place because EFB was converted into fermentable sugar consisting of glucose, xylose, and fructose. And this simply indicated that the combination of alkaline, dilute acid hydrolysis, and um, enzymatic sacrification was able to bring up a promising approach to extract the fermentable sugar from EFB as feedstock for the ethanol production. And not only that, the pretreatment of lignocellulose material using alkaline treatment will increase internal surface area of porosity, decrease the degree of polymerization, and it causes to separate the structural linkages between the lignin and carbohydrates which then causes the disruption in the lignin structure. So this actually enhances the EFB structure and makes it more um, accessible uh, to be broken down during the acid hydrolysis, which then um, made it to be improvised to its enzymatic sacrification. And from the acid hydrolysis, it can be seen that the highest sugar concentration was silos and then followed by glucose. And as for the ethanol from EFB hydrolysate, um, the production profile of the ethanol from the enzymatically sacrificed EFB hydrolysate shows that um, ethanol production increases with uh, time. It's uh, quite, to be said, proportional. It showed that the rate of um, glucose consumption rate was higher and was the highest at the initial pH of 4, which means that um, it shows a complete glucose utilization that the yeast grows and fermentation process performs its best in the um, natural or slightly acidic environment like as per pH 4. The high fermentation efficiency value may be due to the presence of um, the other sugars that actually also um, contributed to a higher concentration of alcohol obtained in the process. And as for the determination of optimum parameter, the effect of um, initial pH uh, shows that it pays a very important or significant influence on the fermentation, especially on the yeast growth, the fermentation rate and the byproduct formation. Uh, the ethanol production um, was actually lower when the pH is high and the lower ethanol productivity may be due to the low metabolic rate of yeast in use and an increase but at the same time if there is to be an extreme increase of pH it will increase the um, it actually increases the permeability of its cell, which actually helps in reduction of the rate of um, sugar fermented in the enzyme production. So what can be said is that the effect of different pH on um, 
ग्लूकोज कंसम्पन बाय आदि सैक्रोमाइज सर्वे से इटल यील्ड वॉज एक्चुअली द हाइस्ट वेन इट वॉज एट पी एच फोर पी एच फोर इज लाइक द ऑप्टिम वैल्यू फॉर इट टू लेट इट सेल्फ इन द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द इथेनॉल एज फॉर इफेक्ट ऑफ टेम्परेचर द टेम्परेचर इन फर्मेंटेशन ऑल्सो हैज द सेम इम्पैक्ट एज द पी एच फॉर इथेनॉल प्रोडक्शन बिकॉज इट अफेक्ट्स द माइक्रोबायो ग्रोथ एंड ऑल्सो द फर्मेंटेशन किनेटिक्स एंड मेथाबोलिजम्स दैट इज इन्वॉल्व ड्यूरिंग द फर्मेंटेशन एंड इट शोज that the ethanol conversion at 30 degrees celsius to 35 degrees celsius was higher and even though the ethanol concentration and yield obtained from both the 30 and 35 degrees were um how to say a uh, fairly significant however it shows that um when the fermentation rate at 40 degrees celsius it showed the um, lowest ethanol production rate that means um fermentation at a higher temperature was actually able to inhibit ethanol production and um so the one that is optimum here would be 30 degrees celsius because it actually showed the maximum ethanol production but then the one at 40 degrees celsius there was growth but then it kind of showed that um like it was more of an excessive temperature because um it was quite little compared to 30 degrees celsius and this might be due to 40 degrees celsius being the excessive temperature for the um yeast itself and then it disrupts the enzyme and then altering the structure of the membrane and decreasing its functionality which then makes it low ethanol production so um the temperature this optimum is 30 degrees celsius because it's like the perfect and optimum one for it and lastly is the um effect of agitation rate and as it can be seen clearly from the graph of the um journal that we saw that um at the agitation rate of um 150 rpm we get to obtain a maximum amount of ethanol so uh it can be said that uh, the fermentation works better at a higher agitation rate because it produces a uh, more concentration of ethanol so that um it's more um better to use a uh, agitation rate that is to be higher and well lastly as for the conclusion um, a combined chemical pretreatment of uh, the efp which is inclusive of the dilute sulfuric acid as well as the sodium hydroxide it has shown that it has um, effectively removed the um, hemicellulose and also the lignin that that yields a high content of cellulose and the fermentation of efp which is derived um glucose is obtained from the combined pretreatment and is proven as good as other renewable sugars for bioethanol production um it can also be said that it's an exploitation in bio for bio refinery because for bio based uh, fuels and products it can be pursued for um a sustainable bioeconomy development and as for this experiment a combination of the integrated pretreatment processes such as the um acid and alkaline treatment the hydrolysis and also the enzymatic sacrification was able to extract a comfortable amount of fermentable sugar from the efp therefore what can be said is that suitable fermentation conditions um are crucial in uh, producing a a uh, appropriate or let's say an optimum ethanol yield from the um efb hydrolysate and that's all from me for this presentation thank you very much